Happy Mother's Day, all. Take your seats for just a quick second and turn your attention to the screen, if you would, please. I always have. As you have a special way of saying things. Things like, don't touch that. What happened to this world? I don't care what kind of phone they have. Because they love you, that's why. I'm not asking you again. Get back in there and brush them right. No, I don't want to see the trick you can do with your eyelids. Can anybody flush around here? Leftovers. Deal with it. You can keep asking, but the answer is still no. I'm in the back. Room. Please just give me one minute. You are 16. For the love of all that is holy, put on some clothes. Three dozen cupcakes by when? Math homework. Yay. I'm supposed to take a deep breath. When's the last time you took a shower? Please do not lick me. Not fair. The fair comes in October. It's a good thing you're cute. Did you wash your hands? How can we be out? I just bought a whole week's worth of groceries. You cut what with the good scissors? That was your teacher on the phone. Why pay that kind of money when I can sew you a dress? I believe in you. You can do this. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
God has a great plan and a big purpose for your life. Don't forget that. Hey, Mom, we do hear you. Now heal us. We love you. We're so thankful for all the things you say. And all that you do for us. Even if we don't always show it. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Now get to bed, I'm tired. Well, it is Mother's Day, and we do wish you all a happy Mother's Day. And uh, as you go out today, we have a, a gift for all the ladies. You don't have to be a mom for all the ladies. We have something out there for you, so please stop and pick up one of these. Things. So uh, <coughs> as we reflect on Mother's Day and uh, things, uh, we've been having a special emphasis this month, kind of on, on families, and challenge you to pray uh, every day this month for something different in um, you know, the aspect of parents and young families and one of the things this uh, that would be on Wednesday is is it's kind of, kind of, kind of unique, but it's uh, pray for grandparents who are raising their grandchildren. I know that that is a reality. Uh, I've seen it down here, and uh, that's always a challenge as well. And be thankful for those grandparents that are doing that to make a difference in the lives of, of their children. So we want to pray not only for mothers this morning at this time, but also for the, the grandparents uh, that are in that situation. And not just... Not just those that raise, but uh, those that uh, make a difference in their grand, their, their, their grandchildren. Every one of us that are grandparents, or of you, I'm not a grandparent, but uh, I'm way too young for that stuff. But uh, anyway, <laughs> those of you who are grandparents, you have a special place of influence and ministry, and uh, we want to pray, be praying for that. So. Uh, a couple of things that are going on this week as far as announcements. Uh, this coming Saturday is a men's breakfast. Guys, sign up for that. And uh, this Wednesday night, there is a special, we're starting a special class. We've really been talking this to, to everybody. Uh, be praying for this. Uh, we have a parenting class. Uh, starts Wednesday night. Mar Mara Pickering, who's the missionary we supported for years in Turkey, has three children. She's going to come down. She's going to share a session on uh, building value and creating special moments in the lives of your children creating a good communication, and then dealing with stress. So it's going to be a great uh, session starting this Wednesday night, 6.30 next door in the ministry center. And if you know of a, a parent somewhere, uh, tell them about this. Or if you know a kid, because I handed out some of these flyers to the high schoolers, and they said, yeah, my mom could really use this. You know, <laughs> so you never know. But uh, So let's uh, pray now and ask God for his blessing. Lord, we come to you today. We thank you for the opportunity of worship. We thank you for being our God and our Father. And uh, Lord, as we enter into your presence this morning through worship, may you be glorified and may your name be lifted up. And Lord, on this special Mother's Day, we do give thanks for the moms that uh, are gathered here as well as those that have had influence on every person here. And pray, Lord, that you will bless those moms uh, that have children in the home, especially in our congregation, Lord, that you will grant them with grace and strength and love and mercy and all the, the characteristics that a mom has to be a mom. And Lord, we pray as we uh, think about families this month, as we pray for them each day, uh, I thank you, Lord, for grandparents. I thank you for the, uh, the influence that, that uh, they have on their grandchildren. And Lord, those grandparents that are raising their grandchildren, we pray, Lord, that you'll give them a special blessing. Thank you for their love and their desire to do that. Lord, we just uh, lift all these things up to you. We give you the glory. Great, well, let's stand together as we continue our worship. The psalmist wrote, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, 
It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, let worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Let's sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved. grace that taught my heart to give and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Dennis. We're here for communion time. Happy Mother's Day to all of you who are here and for those online. For watching the video here a minute ago, it uh, makes me think that um, motherhood requires quite a commitment, requires sacrifice. The cook and bottle washer, housing, nursemaid, taxi driver, homework, supervisor, the list goes on. It requires a lot of love. But there's a love greater than that of a mother. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We pause during each time we meet in service to remember Jesus Christ, the one who came, that God sent in his love to save us from our sins. We remember that last supper, that last meal he shared with his disciples, where he took bread and he broke it. This is my body, broken for you. He took the cup and he said, this is my blood, poured out for you. Mission of sin. A new promise for us to believe eternal life. Thank our Lord and Savior for coming and dying on the cross.
thank our moms for being moms, for loving us, caring for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we gather together this morning. Thank you for your goodness to us, for sending your son. Thank you for his sacrifice on the cross. And we pray as we meditate on him this morning that we'll remember the greatness and goodness of his love. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The elements are scattered here about the room. Uh, the stations, you have two cups stacked together, the bottom cup being the bread, the top cup being the juice. They come and receive, partake here or back at your seat. Please come and partake. Well, I'm going to do something unusual this morning. I'm going to preach a Mother's Day sermon, okay? No, actually, I don't always do a Mother's Day sermon on special on Mother's Day, and for a variety of reasons that. Sometimes I'm in the middle of a series like I am now, but uh, also it's just really, in, in some ways, Mother's Day is really a mixed uh, day for a lot of different people. I've known uh, sometimes mothers would stay away from church on Mother's Day because of some of the uh, problems or issues or tragedies they've had in their own life. And, and so it can be a very emotional day, especially for those that maybe wanted to be a mother and couldn't be a mother or those that have lost a child. Uh, it's just a, a reflection a time that really brings a lot of challenges and a lot of emotions back, and, and I understand all of that. But Mother's Day on the other side of that is a, a great time of celebration for uh, many of us, uh, that uh, had a mom that loved us and cared for us and took care of us. And, and for those that are our moms uh, now that have children still in the home, it can, be a, a, it can be a day that you're treated like you should be treated every day out of the year. But at least you get this, this one day, uh, like the video there um, portrayed at the beginning. You know, all the things moms say, but the reasons they say them are, are so important. So Mother's Day is a, a day of a lot of different things. Uh, you know, as, as I look back, my mother is, has, is uh, no longer with us. She, uh, she actually passed away when she, when she was 62. That's two years younger than I am presently. And still remember the call, four in the morning, from my brother. And uh, they think apparently she died of a heart attack uh, there in her bed. And uh, so, well, you know, as I think back about my mom, it's been a lot of years since she's passed away, uh, one thing that maybe I'm the most thankful for is somehow, and I, I wish I knew what she did, but she instilled in us, the children, a, a confidence that, that you can do whatever you want to do, that, uh, you know, we were valued and uh, she was going to be there for us. And that, that was a, uh, maybe the best gift she ever gave me. 
And maybe as you reflect, maybe there's something you reflect back on your mom that uh, you think, wow, that is the best thing she ever gave. And I bet it's not going to be some trinket or gift or something like that, that, but it's something, some character or some quality or some characteristic that you came and, and decided that that's part of who I am. Well, today as I approach this sermon, I, I kind of want to dwell on that concept of characteristics or qualities that all of us can learn from. Um, <clears throat> it's not a message just to moms that are here today, but it's a message from a mom. And what I mean by that, if you think about mothers in the Bible, maybe the one that stands out the most would be Mary. Oh, there you go. All right, you're already on track with me on this. This is, this is good, going to be good news then. So what I did, I looked at the life of Mary from the, uh, the times that we first hear about her in the early Gospels all the way to the book of Acts. And if you look at all the passages where Mary is mentioned and the things that she did and things... It's an interesting study, really. So th today I'm going to share with you seven qualities from Mary that I think we all can learn from, that can be an example for all of us as we strive to live in the, this world. And especially for moms, um, these uh, are qualities. In some way, you know, God created women differently. Now, I won't go into all the jokes about that, how I could describe that, all right? But um, there are all kinds of things, but there just seems to be a special quality that God put in the hearts of mothers that uh, is special. So let's learn from the heart of a woman that was very special in the eyes of God. And the very first thing is simply this, we need to live a life that honors God. If you look at the story of Mary found in Luke in the very first chapter of the gospel, we find these words, in the sixth month, this is the first time Mary's mentioned, God sent an angel to Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. Now, have you ever wondered why Mary? Of all the young women there in that uh, area, that, that culture, that society, why Mary? There, there's other people we uh, hear, read about in the Bible. There's Salome, there's Martha, and there's other women that are mentioned. But why Mary? Well, we don't know all the reasons, but I think as we go through these passages, it'll begin to come a little bit clearer because it was the type of person Mary was. She lived a life that honored God in whatever way that might have been for her and whatever her parents had instilled in her. We don't know anything about Mary's parents. We don't know anything about her childhood other than she is probably a young girl at this time. According to Jewish tradition and custom, she was probably not even out of her teens. And God comes to her and says, gives her this special message. You have found favor with God. What do you do to find favor? I, I don't know. My guess is that somewhere along the way, she made some right choices. Somewhere along the way, her faith in God was more than just something that she did as she would go to the synagogue or as she would hear her family read the Shema, and De Deuteronomy 6, and the laws of the Old Testament. There was something that connected in her heart and translated into who she was. And she lived a life that honored God. And God still calls all of us to live honorable lives today. Someone has written this, I think it's really good. It says, a holy life is made up of a multitude of small things. It is the little things of the hour and not the great things of the age that fill up a life like that of the apostles or John or of God's servants like Mary. Little words, not eloquent speeches or sermons. Little deeds, not miracles or battles or one great heroic effort or martyrdom make up the true Christian life. It's the little consistent sunbeam, not the lightning. The waters of Siloam that go softly in their meek mission of refreshment, not the waters of rivers of great and rushing torrents, noise and force that are truly symbols of a servant's life. It's those quiet times, those small times, those 
those times that sometimes are least expected, they communicate some of the most um, endearing and intimate times in life. It's the little things that build a life of honor, not always the great magnificent, magnificent things. And we live in a society that you're always looking for the big deal, the big event, the big and all this. And it's just the day in, day out consistency of a life that honors God. I think that's one of the qualities Mary had in her life that we'll see in other things. The light's home, but nobody's on on this thing, all right? Okay, so uh, living a consistent Christian life is, is so important. Is so, uh, <laughs> and unfortunately, it's so contrary to the world we live in today, isn't it? It's so in contrast to what you see modeled on TV. It's so contrast in what is taught in all kinds of uh, dynamics is, is school systems all the way through the things you read, the things you see. But the bottom of the line is this. God still calls us to live lives that are honorable to Him, that show who He is. It's still relevant. It's still important. And as you think of this Mother's Day and maybe the life that maybe your mom was a life of honor, I, I don't know. But God calls us to live lives of honor. May God say to us what he said to Mary. Mary, you have found favor with God. And when that happened, that moment changed her life. Well, as the story goes on in Luke, Mary has a thing they call Mary's song. And it's Mary's response back to all of this there in Luke. And in that, we find a lot of things. But uh, in Luke chapter 1, verse 38, we find that she had a servant's heart. Look at what she says. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Mary, get a hold of this. What was she just told? She was going to have a baby. She had not been with the man. And the baby was going to be the son of God. Would that rock your world any? I think so. It's just, wow. And then her response was, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. What an amazing, amazing mindset. What an amazing servant's heart. I read this. <laughs> that someone wrote. <laughs> I just thought it was great. They had read about a woman who telephoned a friend, and uh, the friend answered, and, and immediately she asked, well, how are you feeling? And the response came, terrible, came the reply. My head's splitting. My back and legs are killing me. The house is a mess. The kids are simply driving me crazy. And very sympathetically, the caller said, listen, go lie down. I'm coming right over to cook lunch for you, clean up the house, take care of the children while you get some rest. By the way, how's Sam doing? There was a pause on the line. Sam? Grasped, gasped the, uh, the housewife. I have no husband named Sam. Oh, my heavens, I'm sorry. I must have dialed the wrong number. Then there was a pause, and the voice said, are you still coming over, though? <laughs> I don't know if the lady did or not, but wouldn't it have been great if she did? Just to take the servant's heart, to be there and do what she knew this lady obviously needed. I don't know about you, I, I can think back in my years of all the people I've seen in ministry and uh, worked with and ministered to, and they've ministered to me. And it's usually those who have a servant's heart that kind of rise to the top of that list. It's not the great, the magnificent things. It's not all those amazing things, but it's those who have a quiet servant's heart. The uh, whatever-it-takes mindset. There was a lady here that some of you know, but most of you don't know. Her name was Lucy Noble. And Lucy uh, had COPD, and Lucy took an uh, oxygen tank with her 
everywhere she went. And she never let that slow her down. And if there was something that needed to be done here, she'd run the computer up in the sound booth. She'd help with meals. She would do, she had that whatever it takes mindset. And uh, I, she's one of those that just come to mind. There's something special about that. And, and Mary was one of those people. And, and God calls us to be one of those people. You know, don't look for the great and glorious things you do. But look for the things that little by little make a difference in the world in which you live. A servant's heart that Mary had is a heart that we need. Another thing that uh, Mary did that uh, is very important is that she glorified God. And we need to glorify God in our lives. Luke 1, verse 46, she goes on and says, Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. For from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. His holy is his name. And see, this is where I begin to, to see why God back several verses came to her and showed her favor because that what she had in her heart said my life it's going to glorify the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God and you've been mindful of my humble state she just had something about her a quality about her that glorified God in her life we need to to, to live lives like Mary did that glorifies God. The most important thing a mother can do or a father can do or a grandfather or a grandmother or an aunt or a uncle or a friend is claim Christ as the center of your life and let that be seen with your children, with your grandchildren. You know, one of the, the greatest heartaches, I was in the youth ministry for uh, 18 years and still do a lot with kids, and Jonah can tell you, some of the greatest heartaches I see is when kids are coming to church and they're wanting to be involved, and I admire them because I know at home they have parents that don't care at all about what, you know, they're doing. Or, and, I, and I've had kids tell me that. So I just wish my mom cared. Glorify God in your life, and you do that by sharing the love of God in the small ways, in the big ways. But God wants people who stand out in the society and culture today because of who they are and how they live for Him. Mary was one of those, and it sets a great example for us. But we also we need to be faithful to the things of God. Now, this is something I don't think we, we think about too much. We get out of the, uh, the Christmas story and get on beyond that. In Luke chapter 2, after Jesus is born and after the, the wise men have done their thing and the shepherds have gone and all the hoop laws done and no longer they're not angels singing anymore and all that other stuff going on, they're out of the limelight. What do they do? Well, when the time of their pre yeah. purification according to the law of Moses had been completed Joseph and Mary took Jerusalem to present him to the Lord now why is that such a big deal why is that verse so important because it shows that Mary and Joseph were faithful to what God expected them as Jewish parents in Leviticus chapters 12, there's all kinds of things that you're, you should do when you have a child. You're to go and you're to be purified. And then there's a specification of certain offerings that were given as Thanksgiving offerings and even specified according to your economic level what you would give. And, and we find that Mary and Joseph gave the, the smallest of the offering, which showed that they were not rich. They did not have a lot. But they took what they had and they offered it to the Lord. And I think what's important, so important to learn from there is that they were faithful in the things of God, in the small things of God, in the big things of God. Mary and Joseph did that. As we go on and look in Luke chapter 12, we'll find that Jesus, when he was 12 years old, what did they do? They went down to Jerusalem for the Passover. And that's when Jesus, at that time, 12 years old, now, I know, you know, that, that wouldn't ever happen today, but a 12-year-old felt that he could take care of himself, okay? Remember, that's when he stayed behind and Mary and Joseph went on. And I don't think he did that. He didn't do it with an attitude, but I know some that do. Uh, but anyway, 
They did that year after year after year, which is another indication that they followed the things of God in all that they did. It was a part of who they were, being faithful in the things of God. You know, I challenge us all to always be consistent in teaching our children the things that they need to know. I, I've talked to parents before and said, well, we're going to let the kids decide about whether they want to go to church or not. We don't want to force anything on them. Okay. But the same parents, I, they never said, well, we're going to let uh, our child decide whether they go to school or not. That we don't want to force anything on them. Or uh, we're not going to force them to learn manners or not it, because we don't want to force them. We're not going to make them take a bath if they don't want to take a bath. We don't want to force those type of you know societal, cultural things on them. No, that doesn't happen because there's things that, that children need that, we, that uh, we know that we want to have them. I don't know where the idea has come along that somewhere along the way we're just going to let our kids... You know, can you make a child believe something? No, I, I, I understand. I understand all of that. But if we can, all we can do as parents is the best we can do. And part of that should be, I want my children to know about God and to bring them and let them learn. So be faithful in the things of God in your life, in your grandchildren's life, in your great-grandchildren's life. Be faithful. Let them see that it's not just something you do on Sunday morning, but it's something that you are all the time. Interesting story that I think we can learn is let your children know that you believe in them. And I'm talking um, adult kids as well as, as kids still in the home. We have two daughters. One is uh, 26 and the other is 35. Am I right, Judy? That she, Judy's barely out of her 40s, so she, she, yeah, the math isn't working right. But anyway, I should have known that, shouldn't have asked that. But this principle is there, you know, I, I, and I've shared this before. I thought, wow, once they grow up and get out of the home, you're done with them, right? And you don't have to worry about them anymore. You don't have to think about them and all that stuff. Uh, for those of you who still have them that age, sorry to disappoint you, but that, that doesn't happen. But that's okay. Let your children know you believe them. Listen to this story here, John chapter 2. On the third day, a wedding took place in Cana in Galilee, and Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus' and disciples had also been invited to the wedding. And when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. And Jesus went on to do the thing his mother wanted him to do. Now, what's interesting there, do you, do you see anywhere where it's Mary says to Jesus, fill up these pots with, the, you know, and turn them to wine? No. It, she never says that. Now, I think they had such a good relationship. Jesus understood what his mom was. Why I, I don't know. But what struck me as I looked at that, Mary had confidence. All right, guys, whatever he tells you to do, you just follow him. You, 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 he will take care of this. She had confidence that Jesus could make it better. She had confidence that Jesus would do the right thing. And there's just something about that quality. And I think it goes back to when I said, you know, my mom instilled within me a quality somehow of confidence. I think maybe this is, is part of that quality where she would believe in us and uh, support us and encourage us. And adult children as well as children still in the home just need to know that mom and dad believe in them. I don't know how many times I've talked to adults that are still dealing with the scars that they received as a child because they felt they could never satisfy mom or dad. And how they were told they were worthless and how they couldn't do anything right and all of those things. And I'm talking adults that are in their 40s, 50s, 60s. So it's so important as parents that we give loving instruction and encouragement. I'm not saying never correct them or, or don't guide them in the right way. But I just love how Mary comes up. All right, guys, just do whatever he says. 
And I get the picture that she just walks out of the room at that point, knowing that Jesus will take care of that. There's nothing wrong with encouraging your children. In fact, I encourage you to do that. There are gifts from God, and they, yeah, you know, they are special. And let them know that. A sixth thing that we can learn from Mary is never stop loving. We skip back or to the end of the Gospel of John 19, and we find this. And when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Where was Jesus when he said these things? The cross. He was hanging on a cross dying. And where was his mother? Right at the foot of the cross. In order for him to have that conversation, she had to be right there. And she never stopped loving. Where were the other disciples? The only one we know that was even around was John. And that's who he's talking to, John. John, take care of my mom. And the interesting thing, we uh, visited Turkey several years ago when we visited the uh, the Pickerings and went to Ephesus. And the tradition says that John took Mary and moved to Ephesus later on. And the Apostle John took care of Mary until she died there in Ephesus. So he took what Jesus asked him to do. But Mary was there at the foot of the cross. You think that was hard? Oh, man. That had to be tearing our heart out. And yet she was there. And a mother's love is a gift from God. And it's not, uh, I'm not a mom, but mom, is it always easy? Probably not. And there's times where your heart's going to be ripped out. But what an example of Mary. That she was right there at the foot of the cross in the darkest hour Jesus ever faced as her son, as her earthly son. Yeah, she understood all those other things and from the from the, the announcement, but I still think, man, that earthly connection there was her heart was being ripped out at the foot of the cross. A mother's love is a gift from God. And let love should never end. We know that she also then went to the cross, the, the tomb and rejoiced there just three days later. One final thing. You get into the book of Acts. Jesus has died. He's resurrected. He's ascended into heaven. What happens in verse 14 of chapter 1? They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the woman, the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. The show was over, some would say. The resurrection has occurred. He's ascended into heaven. It's time to go back to your normal life now. Where's Mary? She's with the other believers, and she is continually joining those in prayer. The prayer of a mother is a powerful thing. It's a powerful in dressing God. It's a powerful example to others. And, boy, what a lesson to us. To never stop praying. To never stop believing in God and praying daily for the blessings of God. And Mary kept on keeping on when it came to her faith. And we all need to do the same. We need to be faithful like she was in so many of these things. And if we do, it's my prayer that we'll all hear those words, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into your rest. So we're going to sing a couple more songs and just spend some time reflecting, giving God thanks and praise for who he is, maybe who your mom was. Pray for your own uh, ability to be a mother, to be a parent. After this, if there's one of our elders will be down to the end of the hallway on the left and the room there. If you have something you would like for them to pray for or pray about, or if you want to find out more about following Christ, that we always have that open and encourage you to do that. So let's uh, let's go on and sing some songs and use this as a time of reflection.
as we contemplate the goodness, the greatness, the love of a perfect God for his imperfect creation. Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy. That bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving of your soul.
faithfulness, his love knows no end. I will sing as long as he gives me breath, the goodness of God. You be seated for just a moment. Mary, come on over here. We'll get here in the center so those online get to see you. Awesome. All right. 
This is Mary Taylor, and Mary comes today to place her membership here in the church. And uh, Mary is just a wonderful person. If you haven't got to know her, I encourage you to do so. I, I've got to know her mainly uh, through our Thursday morning prayer meeting that we have. And as I was talking to her this week about uh, placing membership, and she'd ask about that, she said, well, my ministry in the church is a ministry of prayer. Wow, that is amazing. So, Mary, thank you for coming today. And uh, just want to have you repeat that confession that you've made before and that you still believe in your heart. I believe. We welcome you into the family here. Thank you very much. And just a, a, a note about the, what that is. We, we recognize a formal membership here at the church, and uh, uh, that means that uh, you, people come and they say, I want this to be my home church. I want it to be a place where I worship and I support and I give and, and participate in different leadership functions and congregational decisions. And those are some of the dynamics of a, a formal membership. And uh, But it's uh, what really count is membership in the, the, the kingdom. And uh, that's, you know, what uh, is so important. But it's good to step out and say, I want to uh, join together and serve together and, and lead together. So thank you, Mary, for setting that example for us. And uh, it's great to have your daughter and your son-in-law with you here in worship, Donna and Vincent. So uh, it's been a blessing having them. Um, I'll turn it back over to Robert. I don't usually do this at the end now, so I'm all, you know, mixed up on what I'm supposed to do. So, Just a, a reminder of some of the announcements you saw earlier. Let's stand together and let's sing as we go. All my life, all I know, and it's enough. God's been good. He's always good all the time.